Hi, I'm Aubrey Sitterson, Community Manager for WWE Games at THQ, and I am here with the legendary Texas Rattlesnake himself, Stone Cold Steve Austin. How are you, sir? It's great to be here, Aubrey. We're here to talk to you today about WE13 on sale October 30th and our all new Attitude Era mode. How are you, sir? Outstanding. Are you going to ask me any better questions than that? Uh, um, uh, I'll certainly try. Um, during the 90s, it was, uh, it was a really special, uh, invigorating time for the wrestling industry. Uh, there was WWE, WCW, ECW, all firing on all cylinders. You were, you were involved with all three of those promotions. And I was wondering, what do you see as uh, separating WWE from the pack during that time? Man, I tell you what, uh, you know, it, it was a great ride back in the day. And, you know, obviously I, I started off in WCW, kind of started, uh, I was a good mechanic back in the day. Got fired from that gig, made a turn through ECW, hooked up with Paul Heyman, got a chance to kind of channel uh, uh, the pissed off energy that I possessed at that time, got a chance to vent. Finally, it was time to ride off into the sunset and join WWF at the time, which is WWE. And uh, man, it was a, a pure free for all. It was competition, and uh, uh, everybody was out to be number one. And then uh, all of a sudden, it turned into the Monday Night Wars at WCW versus WWE, and uh, they stomped our ass for two years. And then, uh, due to you know some uh, good booking, great characters, good storylines, we started kicking our ass and uh, never looked back. It was a great time to be in the business. It's a great time for the fans to watch the business. Fantastic. That's great. I, uh, you know, what would you say was it that? really set the Attitude Era apart from what came before and, and what came after. Even. You know, a lot of people say, you know, what set the Ad Attitude Era up or what started the Attitude Era? I, I you know, to me, and I was uh, allegedly the leader of the Attitude Era, you know, uh, sports entertainment, pro wrestling, whatever you want to call it, has always had an attitude. So why that uh, uh, particular generation got labeled, I don't know. But nonetheless, uh, I just, uh, uh, speaking for myself, I just, uh, you know, channeled what I felt, gave what I felt, finally, uh, you know, unleashed uh, the, the personality of me in a, in a competitive environment, which is a uh, killer instinct to dominate and win everything you can, and uh, unleashed that in a ring, in a 20 by 20 ring. And then through good booking, uh, great announcers, my buddy Jim Ross, coloring and embellishing all the stories that, uh, you know, I partook in, it, it just uh, turned into what it turned into. It turned into a damn monster. Uh, you know, you mentioned Jim Ross, and Something we're really excited about about WB13 this year is that uh, good old JR is back uh, at the announcing table with Jerry the King Lawler uh, for our Attitude Era mode storylines. What do you think it is that JR brings to a wrestling match that no other announcer does? Unbridled passion, knowledge, and uh, a great storyteller. And he tells it like it is. And when you've got uh, someone that can verbalize what's going on in the ring like he can, it makes the match all that much better. So it was a very, he was a very important part of my career. He's had an outstanding career, starting from everywhere he started to where he ended up. That's why he's in the Hall of Fame. Uh, and in my opinion, he was the best ever. But when you bring passion, knowledge, the ability to tell stories and make people feel what's going on in that ring, you got a winner. Fantastic. Uh, you know, Jim Ross and Jerry the King Lawler, they're part of our WWE Live experience in WWE 13, which includes sort of an overhauled audio to make the game sound exactly like the action that you see on WWE TV, um, including the, the roar of the crowds. And I know that during the Attitude Era, um, the crowds were nuts. <laughs> crowds were over the top, especially when you came out. What, was, what is it that the crowd adds to your performance in the ring? Does it impact what you do? You know, when you go out to, when you make an entrance, when that glass broke and Stone Cold was to make an entrance, uh, and that roof blew off the building, man, that, that, sends, that sends you higher uh, in life than, than anything that I know of. It's just an adrenaline rush I can't explain. Now, when you get in that ring and you start working, when you start telling that story, you're using that crowd to make your decisions based on what you do, unless it's a response. According to that response that the crowd gives you, you proceed accordingly. So you feed off that, man. That, you're, uh, you're, you're, you're in there, you're having a match, and you're feeding off that crowd. That, that's the gasoline that fuels the match. And that's how you make your decisions. If you're not listening to that crowd when you're working, you're missing the biggest part of, of uh, what working's all about. So, you know, coming out of the gates, adrenaline rush, in the ring, helps you make your decisions. And, you know, the more that crowd gives you, the more you can give them. And it's a win-win situation for them watching and for us, you know, being in the ring working. 
Do you have favorite crowds uh, from your years in the business? Man, I tell you what, there were some favorite buildings that I always have, but I've always said Chicago, Rosemount Horizon was my number one building. Uh, it was a great town for me. There was something about the acoustics of that building with a wooden ceiling. It was just uh, kind of off the chart. Uh, Madison Square Garden is what it is. It's hallowed ground. It's, uh, you know, everybody who's played, you know, that's anybody has played Madison Square Garden. And it's always been said in the business, if you can get over in front of the garden crowd, you can get over anywhere. And, and they'd seen everything uh, that's been around. So it's a hard crowd uh, to get over in. But once you've uh, got over in that arena, uh, you can do it anywhere. But just as far as badass acoustics, Chicago, Rosemount Horizon. Fantastic. You mentioned before that the Attitude Era was somewhat of a nebulous concept. Um, do you see is it, it as beginning at a certain point in time or something that sort of gradually evolved during the 90s? Man, I, you know, again, I think that in this business, there's always been an attitude. It got labeled as the Attitude Era, you know, when I was uh, kind of really getting started and hit my peak. So it is what it is. Uh, that's a hard uh, concept for me to explain because my vision of this business is different than yours, or it's different than the people who write dirt sheets, or it's different than the people that watch. Uh, again, I stick to what I say. Uh, inside a ring, inside a squared circle, guys and gals have always had attitudes. Uh, I can't elaborate anymore because in this business, if you ain't got an attitude, you ain't got nothing. Do you see a difference in the superstars of the Attitude Era compared with the superstars of today? Mm. I can't get too carried away about today's system. It's more of a PG system. And uh, you know what, to me, by and large, it's a little bit more toned down. I'm not gonna sit here and uh, start a booking uh, discussion. But in the Attitude Era, it was a little bit more straightforward. It was a little bit faster. It was a little bit more raw, to use that uh, term. Uh, and it had just had, it had a different feeling. There was uh, a feeling when you watch Monday Night Raw that anything and everything could happen. And uh, a lot of times it did. I don't so much sense that. That's my take on uh, you know the business then and now. It's still a great business. But as everything changes, so has the business of the WWE. Could a superstar like Stone Cold Steve Austin find success in today's wrestling industry? Could a superstar like Stone Cold find success in today's industry? You remember a guy named Jesse Owens in the Olympics? I, I certainly great do. Great sprinter. You remember Jim Brown? I do. You remember Babe Ruth? I do. You remember Mickey Mantle? Yes, sir. Would they be great if they played today? Would they, would they be able to play if they were born at the current time and put into the system? I, I would certainly think so. You would certainly think so. Well, Yes, sir, so I imagine that. Absolutely, Stone Cold Steve Austin would be uh, on top, the top of the WWE if he was currently in the ring in this system. When you look at what I did in the ring, people say, oh, well, if you took all the filters, uh, uh, if you put the filters on Steve Austin and he couldn't say all the things that he used to say, could he survive? Well, you look at any one of my matches and they hold up. Right now, in 2012, they, they hold up. So you're damn right I would uh, exist in uh, WWE currently. And I'd be a top guy. And I'd be beating everybody's ass just like I did in Attitude Era. And I'm fixing to beat your ass if you ask any more stupid questions. Uh, I apologize. I'm sorry. Um, maybe we could talk a little bit about, um, you're on the cover of our Austin 316 Collector's Edition for WE13. And um, it's something we're really excited about. And well, You ought to be. <laughs> it, and it's uh, particularly appropriate, I guess, because our cover superstar in our regular version of the game is CM Punk. And there have been quite a few comparisons between the two of you since late last year with um, what's come to be known as Punk's pipe bomb promo. What do you think about those comparisons? Do you, do you think they're apt or? Well, you got a guy who was uh, pissed off back in the day at the system and ran through anything and everything to get to the top. You had a guy a year or two ago, as we speak, who was pissed off at the system, ready to walk away from it. If you poked him with a stick, he was, he was fixing to. He went out and dropped a, a pipe bomb promo, said what was on his mind, meant what was on his mind, meant it in his heart and in his guts. And uh, it, was a, it was a believable promo because it was a true promo. So I think uh, CM Punk reached a point that Stone Cold was at a long time ago. So I think the, the comparisons, uh, are fair. Now, obviously two different styles in the ring. I think I was probably a little bit more wide open than him, a little bit more violent. I think he's uh, a very sneaky uh, young man in the ring. I think uh, 
He thinks ahead. I think it's a big chess game to him. I think he uh, thinks probably more than anyone in the game today going into a match. But at the same time, I think that uh, he will use any method possible to win a match when possible, given any particular storyline. He'll stop at uh, nothing to win a match. He does have that killer instinct. Sometimes I think you have to rile him up a little bit more and you had to rile Stone Cold up. I think our uh, versions of ass weapons are two different things, but it is a valid comparison, and it'd be a, a, a hellacious match whether it was uh, on a video game or in a squared circle. Uh, yeah. Uh, speaking of yourself and CM Punk inside the squared circle, is that something we might see one day? Is that something we might see one day? Uh <laughs> I'm sorry, did I? As I sit here, I'm nursing a little bit of a knee injury coming out of a surgery, got my knee fixed. Uh, prior to the knee surgery, I could have whipped CM Punk's ass like that. When the knee heals up, I could whip CM Punk's ass like that. And when you ask CM Punk later what he would do to Stone Cold Steve Austin, if he doesn't say that he could whip my ass, then I have to punch him right in the mouth because I expect that's what he'd say. If that match ever gets to the ring, we'll see what'll happen. Who do you think would win that match? Oh, well, I, um, I, I don't know. I, I, I you don't know? What kind of mealy mouth answer is that? Well, I, I think that there's... You there know what? I don't even want to hear your answer now. But I'll say you this. Since, since you asked a stupid question, I'll, I'll give you the answer. Stone Cold Steve Austin does what he wants when he wants. And if I got CM Punk's ass inside that squared circle, I'd do exactly what I wanted to him. I'd take him on a ride up and down for 20 or 30 minutes whatever kind of time I wanted to put in with the kid. Then I'd drop him on that stack of dimes he calls a neck, wham, with a stunner. One, two, three, his sorry ass is looking up at the lights, and Stone Cold Steve Austin is the winner. I can't see that match going any other way. Could you? Uh, no, sir. No, sir. I could not. I, uh... You got any more stupid questions to ask? Um, uh, just, just you know, if that match happened, it'd be a big son of a bitch, wouldn't it? I, I, bl I believe it would. be the biggest match in the history of wrestling. In my opinion, do you see it any differently? No, no sir. No, sir, not at all. You'd love to see that match, wouldn't you? I would, I would, I would pay to see that match, yes, sir. There'd be a lot of people pay to see that match. You got anything else you want to ask Stone Cold Steve Austin? Because I'm starting to get a little bit tired of you. I, um, I, I guess that that, 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 is there anything that you would like to say to our, our, our fans of WWE Games and WWE 13? Yeah, this is Stone Cold Steve Austin talking to all the THQ fans that are going to buy this fine WWE video game. It's the damnedest video game I've ever seen in my life. And the bottom line is it's got Stone Cold Steve Austin in it and CM Punk as well. So finally you get a chance to play Booker like all these little bastards on the internet want to do. All you got to do is dial up Stone Cold and dial up CM Punk and let the son bitches fight it out in the game. And whether it's in the game or in a real squared circle in a sold out crowd, you can rest your bottom dollar that Stone Cold Steve Austin will whip CM Punk's ass and that's all I got to say about that. I consider this interview over. <laughs>